Welcome back to a very pissed off Blackjack. If this crashes during the actual battle, I will have no choice but to just do this fight again. Anyway, okay, I took it back a little bit so we can just segment this into intro plus Smokey and then McGruff and hopefully the actual battle in this one. I have no idea what's going on with this damn thing lately. This is not even my jank computer. No, this is... Uh, I don't know, it's ridiculous. Anyway! Take you on a trip back to the late 1970s, also known as the feel-good decade. A time where individualism and personal liberation took center stage. But not everybody took that as a sign of peace. Yeah, domestic crime was getting bad. Like, really bad. At the turn of the decade, the American people made a hero to save them from themselves. A dog in a trench coat! This canine began his campaign modestly enough, but he needed a name. After eight months of polling, he was given one, along with an unforgettable slogan. Take a bite out of crime. McGruff the Crime Dog. Focused and determined to make that bite count, McGruff hit the streets hard and fast. In just a year, more than 50% of Americans had seen at least one McGruff advertisement. It's because teenagers are the victims of over 2,000 violent crimes by strangers every day. You can help stop it. That's because he was willing to get his job done by any means possible. Hmm. <laughs> Where's the cool trench coat? Created in 1979. Yeah, that's the pretty late 70s. Although it's funny because the war on crime didn't really get its uh, big kickoff until around, like, I don't know, I feel like 81? It was during my lifetime. Yes, I'm considerably older than most of my audience. Hi, how you doing? I'm literally old enough to be most of your parents. Hi. Uh, Bloodhound. Six foot tall, 155. Even if it meant light. ultimate embarrassment. He used commercials, cartoons, comic books, video games, musicals. He even released his own anti-drug album with such classic singles as Crack and Cocaine. Cause nobody's needing that crack and cocaine, making a mess of your mind. And Inhalants. Don't you inhale You'll be suffering pain. It's really, really bad. As McGruff's plan generally targeted children rather than current criminals, it required patience and time. But it worked. Over the next few decades, crime dropped exponentially. The next generation of America was smarter and safer. Now, some of you are probably thinking, Hey, you can't prove McGruff was responsible for all of that. And I say to you, can you prove he wasn't? Regardless, McGruff certainly had a massive impact, leading the charge against crime. I mean, that's seriously impressive, considering all my dog does is sit around licking his balls. McGruff's not just any dog, he's a six-foot-tall bipedal bloodhound. A dog breed known for their excellent sense of smell and extremely powerful bite. Time-stopping capability, yeah. Circle of respect. And they're probably going to get into that. A monster truck. That sounds fun. Sp speed and strength of a bloodhound. Yeah. I think that's probably faster than a bear, but not nearly as strong. You notice I am treating this like a legitimate battle. <laughs> Presumed police training. Yeah, probably some detective training as well. Time stopping versus the time reversing omnipotence concerning crime, so if that crime is lighting a forest fire, then they both have omnipotence over it. And then where does that lead? What kind of a benevolent god would permit this? Floppy adorable ears. Scaling him to your average bloodhound, McGruff can likely run 45 miles per hour, jump 10 feet high, and bite with enough pressure to break bones. And unlike my dog, McGruff wears a cool trench coat, which not only protects him from the rain and cold, but gives off a neat detective vibe. However, unlike Thailand's Air Chief Marshal, Mr. Fufu, Rest in peace, buddy. True story, McGruff doesn't appear to hold an official police rank. He calls himself a pretective, which is just as fake as it. Although, let's get down to it. Uh, 
there is a penguin in the Finnish army or er, Finnish navy who holds a very high rank and goes to inspect the sounds. Oh wait! Really if a crime hasn't happened yet, then how does he know to stop it? That's like some minority report shit. He possesses a certain set of skills to do so. He has a keen eye for details and context clues. He's exceptional at analyzing and predicting potential crimes in progress. So he can predict what's gonna happen with a few context clues, but that doesn't mean much if he can't stop a mugging or whatever. Luckily, McGruff has plenty of tools and talents. When someone's in trouble, McGruff's circle of respect creates a force field. Which is apparently the perfect defense against bullies. While he's not an official member of the police force, he's been hanging around officers for decades. So. Impressive video editor. Bite can snap bone, but can it snap a bear's bone? Like, with the thicker limbs and everything. It's not unreasonable to believe he's picked up some police combat training. Being your own dog has its perks. For example, McGruff's car isn't a standard beat-up police cruiser, it's a friggin' monster truck! Nice. This bad mamma jamma is based on a 2010 Ford Super Duty with 540 cubic inches of gas-guzzling badassery. Definitely an upgrade over his original 96 model, though I'm not sure what this has to do with preventing crime. Screw preventing crime! This beautiful beast prevents all kinds of other stuff, like boredom, being a little sissy, and small European cars from going unsmashed. That's it. The... Let's be honest, if you were a criminal, or if you were anybody, and a monster truck came roaring down the road, you would stop what you were doing and stare at it. And I just want to take this opportunity to talk about our old dog, Peppy. She was a dachshund. And long-haired, cute as a button, very sweet, dumb as a box of rocks. And when we were moving out here from Indiana, she, one, would like to sit under the parking brake. And so, consequently, in the two weeks it took to get out here, yeah, you remember Peppy? You remember Peppy? She was a good dog. So in the time it took to get out here, Athena had learned, Peppy! She had never had any reason to say this before. One time we were at a restaurant and we heard this loud tr truck honking from outside. And we were like, oh God, so inconsiderate. And dad goes, I'll be right back. And he runs out and sure enough, there's the dog standing on the steering wheel honking the horn. I just thought that would be a funny little insert. Enough for me. Ironically, despite his skills and claim to stop crimes before they happen, he's more of a counselor than a protector, and doesn't actually step in all that often. No, but he doesn't need to when he can freeze time! Ah uh, yes, McGruff is famous for pausing time and breaking the fourth wall to discuss an ongoing potential crime. Unfortunately, while pausing time, McGruff does not seem capable of interacting with the world around him. Ah, uh, that's Jenny, but that's not Jenny's dad. If she gets into that car, that may be the last time you'll see Jenny. He doesn't even bother saving Jenny from her kidnapper. Which means he was right! That was the last time we saw Jenny! Still, McGruff's <laughs> campaign has been wildly victorious. It's safe to say he succeeded in taking a bite out of crime. Oh my god, we didn't even mention the reality flipping switch he has in his office! What the hell is up with that thing? I'm McGruff the Crime Dog, and I'm here to help take a bite out of crime. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, I've got a public service announcement for you. It's about food. Grand Peppy. Remember, kids, fire is a dangerous tool which should never be left unattended. Well, time to go. Only you could have prevented that forest fire, fool. Respect your 
surroundings. I'll show you respect. Remember, kids, if you're about to be mauled by a bear, Stupid dog. Take a bite out of this! Kids, remember me. Hey, oh, looks like McGruff had a rough time out there. Smokey was clearly the stronger combatant, thanks to, well, thanks to being a giant bear, really. Yeah. Mick Ruff wasn't totally outclassed. His greater speed and smaller size made the battle quite tedious for Smokey. But that's about it. Yeah, he couldn't compete with Smokey in anything else. It's like my grandpappy always said, why have a guard dog when you can get a guard bear? Yep. But what truly mattered in this battle were their unique abilities, and in that, McGruff didn't stand a chance. When McGruff paused time, he couldn't affect the world around him. Well, Smokey has shown that he can. And really, what are you gonna do against a bear that can grow to the size of a mountain? So, bear beats dog, Smokey's powers were superior, and ultimately Smokey had far more options to take McGruff down for good. Smokey was just more than McGruff could bear. Haha, <laughs> one last bear pun! Suck it, Wiz! Uh, the winner is Smokey Bear. Well, boss. Stick around, we're about to announce the combatants for the next death battle. And if you want to watch exclusive commentary on this episode, click that little box over there and start a first membership trial. Two previous combatants. Only you can prevent forest fires. Click the link below and help save lives. Well, that's cool. Well, I mean, like I said, it was pretty much a foregone conclusion, right? My god, I am getting a janky-ass frame rate here. And it says it's a 30 FPS. This is not 30 FPS. This is like 5. Anyway. So yes, foregone conclusion. Um, Thor versus Wonder Woman is probably a better matchup than they had Wonder Woman versus Rogue. I mean, <laughs> that was pretty pathetic. <laughs> but, uh... Thor won, Wonder Woman lost. Oh yeah, spoilers for episodes that are several years old. Uh... <laughs> I don't really have much to say about that. Um, it's probably going to be another sprite battle. Just This was very interesting. They should uh, pre-animate... Well, I mean, they're all pre-animated, but you know what I mean. Cell animate. I mean, this is... 2D animate. I mean, yeah, let's face it, even 2D animators don't use cells anymore. And that's probably for the best, because that was a lot of waste. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, like I said, it was pretty much a foregone conclusion. It, uh, you know, you can't take a dog, put him against a bear, without, you know, some sort of special circumstance to help the dog along, like... The bear doesn't want to fight, and that obviously wasn't going to be the case here. I mean, yeah, there are cases of dogs driving off bears, but I don't know if there... There are probably some cases of dogs beating bears in fights, but, you know. Those dogs just got lucky. <laughs> those dogs got really lucky. Yeah. Hi, Lugia. Seen her. Are you going to do better if I pick you up? You're not going to crawl all over me? Well, hey, I mean, the recording actually lasted for the rest of the battle. So, I applaud this computer. I give it pets. I am... Let's show you my hand there. Literally petting it right now. 
So, I mean, that's really all I have to say. Like I said, it was foregone. I'm not too jazzed about next time. I mean, I guess they wanted to retouch Wonder Woman since we had the movie. And um, you would think they would wait until after Ragnarok was out, though, to, you know, hype up Thor and everything. But, you know, both are in the current consciousness. I guess it comes down to they both have um, unstoppable forces. He has Mjolnir, Mjolnir, whatever, the hammer. And she has the shield. Gosh, I wonder what the lasso of truth is going to make him confess. <laughs> but she didn't use that against Rogue other than to bind her, did she? And, you know, fat leather good that did her. Goodness. I have a sesame seed on me <laughs> from my breakfast. Anyway. <laughs> it did take me back, though. I remember that commercial. <laughs> you notice, though, when she walked off, the guy didn't follow her. With Jenny. So, yeah, it's possible he was just asking directions. Because all it was was don't get in that car, and she clearly did not get in that car. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, I look at these old commercials and I always wonder what the kids in them are doing now. I mean, that Jenny's got to be older than me. She's, you know, going to be in her early 40s or so. <laughs> All those kids in the playground riding bikes and stuff. You know, where are they all now? The kids that sang back up on McGruff's album, where are they all now? And of course, then you get like the zookeepers who treated Smokey really badly. Let's, let's be honest with ourselves. That was horrible. Even if that was like a travel cage, that was horrible. You know, at least give him a ball or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, old zoo standards are gross, man. Ugh. I mean, at least zoos nowadays are held to some accountability. And I, I worked at the Oregon Zoo for a, about a month and a half. No, not even that long. Maybe a month. And then my, um, my supervisor basically acted like anything that I did even, that he didn't like was some sort of massive personal failing. And it was like, seriously, dude. It was all a personality thing. I liked the zoo. And I really liked one of my co-workers. We talked about video games all day long. I worked at a stamp rally. It was neat. Except no one else there had ever heard the term stamp rally, and I don't know why. That's exactly what we were doing. Anyway, talking about zoos too much. Talking about kids and old commercials too much. Um... I already gave my long story short, so I'm just going to go and try to get Athena not to treat me like Mount Mommy. Oh my goodness, she's a little explorer. Uh. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess that's it. I'll see you in three weeks.